Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Saturday, August 19th. So today we will see the moon in Virgo go void, of course, at 4.51 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we will be locking into Libra in energy at 7.54 a.m. Again, Eastern Standard Time. So the last couple of days with the moon in Virgo has definitely brought us down to earth, put us more in a logical, practical approach to our problems, identifying the problems so that we can come up with solutions on how we're going to resolve said issues. We've been sorting through our inner realm of thoughts and emotions, sorting through our external lives, the details, the items, if you will. We're trying to create order where there's been chaos. And the Virgo moon has done an exceptional job of highlighting for us where it is that the chaos really does need to simmer down quite a bit where we need a little bit more reorganization rearranging realignment in our lives and of course this is prepping us and preparing us for Virgo season that of course will have a major focus on the reorganization the restructuring of our lives and as we're shifting into the Libran moon, what we'll find is that we're going to try and start balancing ourselves out, starting with our heart and our head. Again, the moon being in Virgo energy, we've been up in the head space, we've been very intellectualized, very cerebral, very much trying to rack our brains on what needs to be taken care of, what it is that we need to do from here, the plans, the variables, the alternatives. The Libra and Moon is going to help us kind of process all of that from a balanced perspective. Now, disclaimer, I say this every time the Moon moves into Libra. The point of the Moon being in Libra is for us to find balance. How do we find balance? We have to start exploring the extremes. We have the opportunity to see different sides of the coin, if you will, different angles, different perspectives of some of the situations and circumstances that we've been tunnel vision on, because that's what the Virgo energy does. So the Libra energy, it's a lighter, it's airy, it is an air sign. So we're kind of moving out of the physical anchoring in of our presence in the physical realm, in the physical body, we are looking to lighten the vibe. We are looking to kind of make things light and fluffy to be sociable to kind of, you know, dance around the I'm going to say lighter topics and themes because one of the uh, negative aspects of the moon in Libra is that we like to stay in the shallow end of our thoughts of our emotions. We don't want to get too deep. We don't want to peel back the layers. We want to stay surface level and achieve as much peace and harmony and balance on this surface level as possible. So we have seven different aspects here today. Six of them are going to involve the moon. The moon, while still in Virgo energy, is going to interact with the North Node in Aries in a way that is going to illuminate choices, decisions, options, alternatives. Now, of course, that North Node in Aries is trying to get us on the right path in order for us to reach our soul's mission, reach our soul's potential. But of course, we have some thinking to do, some sorting out to do, some debating to do with the moon in Virgo. So at least we have a little bit of clarity on the choices that are before us. And again, I think I dove into this yesterday. The major choice that we have right now is whether or not we're going to stick to this wounded path, this wounded uh, direction, or whether or not we're going to elevate, to evolve, push ourselves out of those wounded patterns and behaviors and actually dabble into a brand new uncharted territory where, of course, healing can occur. Now, just because we see the options, just because we see the choices doesn't mean that we're fully prepared to actually make them, to pull the trigger on them. Seeing them is just the first step, the first stage. And with the moon in Virgo, we typically speaking are leaning towards the path, the choice, the decision that makes the most logical and practical sense. Now, that needs to be balanced out with our emotions, with our intuition. And of course, the Libran energy that we're going to move into is going to help us do just that. The moon, while still in Virgo, energy is going to directly oppose and sit across from Neptune, who is retrograde in this Pisces energy. Of course, Neptune rules over our spirituality, our dreams, our imagination, our fantasies, just as much as it does our fears, our pain, our trauma, our delusions. 
we're retrograde in this Pisces energy, which means that we're not able to conjure up a plan, a vision, a goal that far into the future because we really have to focus on some of the things that we've been looking to avoid in the here and now. We have to wrap some things up in the here and now in order for us to actually move on without this extra emotional baggage kind of tagging along. So the Virgo and Pisces energy sit across from each other in the Zodiac wheel. They share the axis of healing. The Virgo energy, of course, wants to focus on the physical realm, the physical body, the mental health of the here and now, healing those particular aspects, while the Pisces energy is emotional, intuitive, it's spiritual, it's karmic in nature. So what we're getting here is a realization where it is that we have to balance the scales. Yes, use our brain, but also use our heart space, use our higher self, use the magic of the possibilities that await us when we stop defining the possibilities of our future by our current circumstances. You got to bust out of that. So it is balancing logic and practicality with magic, with emotion, with intuition. So the moon in Virgo is going to trine, beautiful interaction, with Pluto, which we've talked about multiple times, how much I enjoy this energy, and we'll cover it again. But Pluto is retrograde in Capricorn energy. So Virgo energy, Capricorn energy, they're both Earth energies. This is what gives us our trine. It's a harmonizing, gentle nudge, gentle push, if you will, in the right direction. I often talk about how we like Virgo energy interacting with Pluto because Virgo energy is doing a deep dive in the smaller details of our working brain, of our egoic intellect, where logic and practicality rule. Well, Pluto does a deep dive in our psyche, in the root of the program, the root of the conditioning. And what we get here, because this is a positive interaction, is likely an aha moment, an epiphany, if you will especially on a psychological level where we continue to tell our thing, ourselves things that we don't necessarily agree with or align with or believe in. It's just a repetitious nature of the narrative. We have to kind of be aware of that, nip it in the bud, so to speak, replace it with a better narrative, a better thought, a better belief system, and really kind of make an extra effort to deconstruct and totally collapse that part of the belief, that part of the conditioning, of the programming, of our habits, of our nature, of our mental plane. So this is the last aspect that the moon in Virgo is going to make before going void, of course, which I think is a beautiful one because it means that there is some kind of domino effect taking place, starting with the deep-rooted system in our psyche, bringing it into our egoic awareness, adding logic practical dissection to where it is that these primary root foundational beliefs or narratives came from. And therefore, when we are aware of it and we identify it as either no longer being applicable or no longer being in alignment or no longer being supportive or encouraging or true, we have the ability to flip the switch, to flip the narrative and therefore collapse the old and initiate something new, something more supportive, something more encouraging. So we love this for ourselves. So this is the point in time where the moon goes void. We will lock into the Libra energy at 7.54 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. At 8.13 a.m., we will have the moon now in Libra energy interacting with Jupiter, the planet of growth and expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings. The spiritual knowledge that we've accumulated through the tough love life lessons of our lifely experiences here on this earth plane. And... Of course, Jupiter is in this Taurus energy until May of 2024, has been there since May of 2023, giving us an opportunity to bust out of our comfort zones, bust out of the rut that we're in, bust out of the version of ourselves that has created that realm and reality that no longer is in alignment, no longer sparks joy, puts us in a situation to fully contemplate our options and opportunities moving forward to create a reality in a realm that not only looks good, that feels good because we are creating it with our creator energy from our higher self aligned with our heart space. Now, granted, this is a very low and slow and steady process of growth. So slow that in fact, it may not feel like you are moving forward at all. It is only going to be in May of 2024 that we're able to look back, reflect upon this period of time and actually see how much growth was made. But as we're in it, it feels like we are just creeping 
and most of us not even feeling like we're even creeping at all. So the moon in Libra interacting with Jupiter in this way is going to illuminate different perspectives, a different angle, a different side of the coin of some of the opportunities that we have been contemplating, especially we're making changes and transformations in our physical realm is concerned. We need to do this again. We need to analyze the extremes in order for us to work our way together in the middle where we can compromise, find a new balancing point, find a new grounding point. Now, the moon in Libra is very happy-go-lucky, very bubbly, very airy, very chatty, very social, very perky, if you will. Again, wanting to stay in the shallow realm of our experiences. Jupiter has a tendency to magnify, to turn the volume all the way up on whatever it is that we're thinking and feeling, giving us a little bit of optimism, a little bit of confidence, especially compared to the last couple of days where we have been a little bit serious and somber in that Virgo energy, really trying to stay in the intellectual, practical realm of our intellect, this particular energy, this particular intensity is going to illum for, uh, illuminate for us where it is that, you know what, we're riding a good wave. It may be a short-lived wave, but it's a positive wave nonetheless. And we are very, I'm going to say, perky about some of the choices that we now have before us. We're semi-excited. We're, I'm going to say, being a little bit extra, a little bit overly dramatic with these positive vibes. Um, I'm going to I'm going to say there there is an error about faking it until you make it. And sometimes we have to really kind of over exaggerate our bubbliness, our happiness, our joy in order to actually, again, align with a situation that actually makes us feel like we are exuding the correct type of energy for the situations and circumstances that we're currently percolating over, let's say. So what we're going to get from this is a magnification, first of all, of energy and attitude, hopefully in the positive way. Secondly, an opportunity to see the options, the alternatives, the opportunities that lay before us in a different light. And thirdly, really explore some of the extreme options, alternatives and choices and decisions in a way that would illuminate where it is that we have to kind of meet them in the middle and find some common ground. The moon in Libra is going to semi-square Venus. Venus, of course, rules over the Libra in energy. So there's always a little bit more of an impact when we kind of interact with the ruler of the energy that the moon is in. Venus, of course, still retrograde in this Leo energy, which is the heart and soul of the Zodiac. She's still kind of processing how she's getting herself out of this dark hole. She's climbing it, but she's looking back and saying, hmm, am I ever going to get out of this dark hole? She's looking up, seeing the light at the top of the surface level of where it is that she fell into this dark pit, really wondering whether or not she has what it takes in order to stay the course and actually get out of this dark pit. But our attitudes, our mood is changing. We are a little bit more bold and brave and courageous than we've been in the previous weeks. We are identifying what needs to stay and what needs to go according to our heart space. And this particular interaction does create a tension and a conflict, emotionally speaking, because, of course, Libra energy wants everybody to be happy, everything to be fair, everything to work out in everyone's favor. And of course, that is just an unrealistic approach. Uh, there, we all cannot be happy. Why is that? Well, because many of us are learning this tough love life lesson right now, where the North Node is in Aries and the South Node is in Libra and energy, that we can't make anyone happy except for ourselves. And many of us struggling to even realize where we can make ourselves happy. This is a disconnect. We have to start detaching, creating distance between us and whoever it is that we're too integrated with, too intertwined with, too attached with. Why is that? Because the Libra energy has us dimming our light, putting our own wants, needs, and desires on the back burner for the sake of not rocking the boat with other people. The Libra energy in particular, very representative of relationships, very focused on relationships. And of course, Venus being the ruler over this Libra energy, also very focused on relationships. But right now, we need to stop worrying about making other people happy and start worrying about the relationship that we're currently building with ourselves. Again, Venus. Venus just had her resurrection, her rebirth date on the 13th when she had that conjunction with the sun. 
She is entering into her brand new 584 day cycle of building herself up, building this new version of herself to the point where we can anchor it in and integrate it and not go back to the old habits, the old version of self. And so we really need to understand First of all, where it is that we have to manipulate the energy exchange in our personal relationships as of now in order to create date, distance and space for us to be our own selves. Sometimes when we hang around people that our old version of self drew to us due to the energy and frequency in which we are currently sitting in, uh, we create problems for ourselves because we're not being true to ourselves instead of actually pouring into getting to know this new version of self and anchor this new version of self in, we continuously are triggered and activated by the old realm, the old people in the old realm that our old version of self created. And every single time that we're kind of being triggered and activated to be that old version of self, it puts us further and further away from aligning with our authentic self, our new version of self, and of course, building the bridge between deconstructing who it is that we've had to be and following that bridge, building that bridge to make it a very easy transition to walk into who it is that we now are and who it is that we desire to become. The sun in Leo energy is going to trine, which is a beautiful interaction, with the north node in Aries energy. So this is a little bit of a pep in our step, if you will. Considering the fact that the north node in Aries energy is trying to get us on the right path, really pushing us to be our own individual self, to abandon the team, the group, the partnership, the collective, in order to truly identify who it is that we now are, pour into the relationship with self, really aligning with new passions, new dreams, new desires that we ourselves need to pursue without the monologue, the commenting, the opinions, the views of other people. And so having the sun, which of course is shining a bright light on what it is that we have to do, what it is that we have to embody as far as the Leo energy goal goes, being bold and brave and courageous enough to dance to the beat of our own drum, to truly express our soul self through this meat suit of a body, we are realizing that we are moving forward. Even if it means identifying a goal that we didn't have two days ago, that is a baby step. Even if we are not prepared to take action on rising to the new challenges that we are being faced with, new roles, responsibilities that we're being asked to step into, even if we're not prepared to take action, we mentally and emotionally speaking are building ourselves up to the point of action. This is the point in this whole little process especially in the final days of Leo season, where we are heart aligned, where we truly recognize where it is that we have an opportunity for growth, we have an opportunity for improvement, we have an opportunity to get on the right energetic level in order to align with our future dreams, visions and goals. There is a lot of inner realm progress and this particular energy is really going to show where it is that we have to continue to push ourselves to be bold, brave, and courageous in order to honor our heart space. So the last aspect that we have here today is the moon interacting with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, who of course is retrograde and this Pisces energy, really looking to deconstruct and collapse some of the old beliefs, the old dreams, the old goals, the old visions, the old ways of doing things, the old ways of operating, the old ways of being who it is that we've had to be through our trauma, through our survival chapter and who it is that we now need to kind of embrace embrace and embody because we're no longer in that chapter of our lives. So of course, Saturn, he is trying to close out a 30 year cycle in this Pisces energy. We have a couple of years left before we will see a brand new fresh, clean slate be provided to us to build new earth. And therefore the moon in Libra and energy interacting with Saturn in this way, let me just say Saturn's a little bit of a Debbie Downer. Um, he's really going to knock the wind out of these, this very high, bubbly, semi-shallow vibration of positivity that the moon in Libra has us in because we have to come down a couple of pegs to realize that, n that it's not all fun and games. It hasn't been all fun and games, granted, but at the same time, the more we 
pour into avoiding the tough things, really resolving the tougher issues, really taking a good look at the challenges and the obstacles. The more time we spend trying to avoid these things and procrastinate on these things, the more we're actually derailing the authentic energy that is here to push us into new roles and responsibilities, new chapters where karma is concerned. So yes, we are going to come down a couple of pegs, but we need to realistically see, again, in, in the perspective of viewing the extreme points of view, where it is that, yes, things are ending, we're closing the door on some, some things, we need a lot of closure, we've outgrown certain topics and themes and karmic chapters, and where it is that we're not quite ready to jump into the new, but where it is that we have to make peace with this awkward adjustment period that does not feel good. So there is going to be a little bit of a Debbie Downer type of vibe that kicks in with this Saturn aspect, but it is going to illuminate for us where it is that the scales are very unbalanced between closing the door on the old and opening up the door to the new. The hallway that we're currently standing in, we're just not sure which way to go and what these doors are actually doing.